Hello, hello, welcome. Welcome to day seven of our Bible in a Year challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's word daily, every day in 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook on Instagram and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Aroleva. Let's get started. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather once again on this seventh day of this new year to immerse ourselves in the treasure of your word, we come before you with hearts filled with reverence and expectation. We thank you for the gift of your scriptures, which are a wellspring of wisdom, guidance, and spiritual nourishment for our souls. Lord, we recognize that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, illuminating our way through life. Today, as we open our Bibles, we invite your Holy Spirit to be our guide, our teacher, and our source of inspiration. As we embark on this journey through the passages set before us, we pray for understanding, insight, and revelation. May your word penetrate our hearts, renew our minds, and transform our lives. Grant us the wisdom to apply the lessons and principles from your word to our daily walk with you. May the stories teachings and messages we encounter today deepen our faith refine our character and equip us to serve you and others with love and grace we commit this time of bible study into your hands trusting that you will speak to us and empower us to live according to your will in the mighty name of jesus our lord and savior we pray amen Day 7, January 7th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading Old Testament. Genesis 14, Genesis 15, Genesis 16. New Testament, Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Matthew 6, 1 to 24. Psalms and Proverbs, Psalm 6. Old Testament NIV version Genesis 14 1 to 24. Abraham rescues Lot. At the time when Amraphel was king of Shinar, Ariok king, king of Elasa, Kedolaomar king of Elam, and Tidal king of Goyim, these kings went to war against Bera king of Sodom, Bersha king of Gomorrah, Shinab king of Adma. Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these latter kings joined forces in the valley of Sidim, that is, the Dead Sea Valley. For twelve years, they had been subject to Kedolaomar, but in the thirteenth year, they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Kedolaomar and the kings allied with him went out and defeated the Rephaites in Ashtaroth Karnaim, the Zuzites in Ham, the Emites in Shaveh, Kiriathaim, and the Horites in the hill country of Seir as far as El Paran near the desert. Then they turned back and went to En Mispat, which that is Kadesh. And they conquered the whole territory of the Amalekites as well as the Amorites who were living in Hazazon Tamar. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar, marched out and drew up their battle lines in the valley of Sidim against Kedolaoma, king of Elam, Tidal, king of Goyim, Amraphel, king of Shina, and Ariok, king of Elasa four kings against five now the valley of sidim was full of tar pits and when the kings of sodom and gomorrah fled some of the men fell into them and the rest fled to the hills the four kings seized all the goods of sodom and gomorrah 
and all their food. Then they went away. They also carried off Abraham's nephew Lot and his possessions since he was living in Sodom. A man who had escaped came and reported this to Abraham the Hebrew. Now, Abraham was living near the great trees of Mamre the Amorite, a brother of Eshcol and Aner, all of whom were allied with Abraham. When Abraham heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. During the night, Abraham divided his men to attack them and he routed them, pursuing them as far as Hoba, north of Damascus. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative Lot and his possessions together with the women and the other people. After Abraham returned from defeating Kedolaomar and the kings allied with him, the king of Sodom came out to meet him in the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. The king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, With raised hand I have sworn on oath to the Lord God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing but what my men have eaten and the share that belongs to the men who went with me to Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them have their share. Genesis 15, 1-21 The Lord's Covenant with Abraham After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, You have given me no child, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. And he took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of all of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a haifa, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought all this to him, cut them in two, and arranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. Then the Lord said to him, Know for certain that for four hundred years your descendants will be strangers in a country not their own, and that they will be enslaved and mistreated there. But I will punish the nation they serve as slaves, and afterward they will come out with great possessions." You, however, will go to your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. In the fourth generation, your descendants will come back here, for the sin of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot what, with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham and said, 
to your descendants i give this land from the wadi of egypt to the great river the euphrates the land of the kenites kenizites Kadmonites, hittites perizzites raphaites amorites canaanites jigesites and jebusites genesis 16 1 to 16 hagar and ishmael now sarai abram's wife had borne him no child but she had an egyptian slave named hagar so she said to him to abram the lord has kept me from having children go sleep with my slave perhaps i can build a family through her abram agreed to what sarai said so after abram had been living in canaan ten years sarai his wife took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abraham, You are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I put my slave in your arms. And now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abraham said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road of shore. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? I am running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. She gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Ber Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. So, Hagar bore Abraham a son, and Abraham gave the name Ishmael to the son she had born. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore him Ishmael. New Testament NIV version, Matthew 5, 43 to 48. Love your enemies. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your father in heaven he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous if you love those who love you what reward will you get and not even the tax collectors doing that and if you greet only your own people what are you doing more than others do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew 6, 1-24 Giving to the needy. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Prayer. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. 
then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Fasting When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is on sin, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Treasures in heaven. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Psalms and Proverbs Psalm 6 verse 1 to 10 For the director of music with stringed instruments, according to Sheminith, a psalm of David. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me. Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long? How long, Lord? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name, who praises you from the grave. I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you would do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be overwhelmed with shame and anguish. They would turn back and suddenly be put to shame. Hallelujah. Amen. Lessons learned from Genesis 14, Genesis 15, and Genesis 16. Conflict Resolution Genesis 14 demonstrates the importance of conflict resolution and the value of seeking peaceful solutions rather than resorting to violence. God's Covenant with Abraham Genesis 15 records God's covenant with Abraham, emphasizing God's faithfulness to his promises and the importance of faith and trust in God's plan. Hagar and God's Care Genesis 16 tells the story of Hagar and her encounter with the angel of the Lord. It teaches us about God's compassion and care for the marginalized and oppressed. Lessons learned from Matthew 5, 43 to 48 and Matthew 6, 1 to 24. Love your enemies. In the passage, Matthew 5, 43 to 48, Jesus teaches the radical concept of loving your enemies. It emphasizes the importance of showing love and forgiveness 
even to those who oppose us, sincerity in worship. Matthew 6, 1-24 highlights the importance of sincerity in our worship and acts of righteousness. It teaches us to prioritize our relationship with God over seeking the approval of others. Lessons learned from Psalm 6. Cry for mercy. Psalm 6 is a heartfelt cry for God's mercy and forgiveness. It teaches us about the importance of turning to God in times of distress and seeking His grace and comfort. In summary, these verses offer lessons on conflict resolution, God's faithfulness to His promises, God's compassion for the marginalized, the radical command to love our enemies, the sincerity of our worship, and the importance of seeking God's mercy and comfort in times of trouble. These lessons provide valuable insights for our faith and daily lives. Faith declarations from Genesis 14, Genesis 15, and Genesis 16. I declare my commitment to seek peaceful solutions and practice conflict resolution in my relationships, avoiding unnecessary strife. I confess that I will trust in God's protection and provision, even in challenging circumstances just as Abraham did. I declare my faith in God's promises, knowing that he is faithful to his covenant agreements. I confess that I will have unwavering trust in God's plan for my life, even when circumstances seem uncertain. I declare my acknowledgement of God's care and compassion for the marginalized and the oppressed. I confess that I will seek God's guidance and provision in times of difficulty just as Hagar did. Faith declarations from Matthew 5, 43 to 48 and Matthew 6, 1 to 24. I declare my commitment to love my enemies and show love and forgiveness to those who oppose me. I confess that I will strive to reflect the perfect love of God, seeking to be more like Him in my actions. I declare that I will prioritize sincerity in my worship and acts of righteousness, seeking God's approval above all else. I confess that I will trust in God's provision and seek His kingdom first, knowing that He cares for my needs. Faith Declarations from Psalm 6 I declare my reliance on God's mercy and grace in times of trouble, knowing that he hears my cries for help. I confess that I would turn to God in my distress, seeking his comfort and guidance in every situation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Please, if you've been blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, Kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer in jesus name amen congratulations if you said this prayer we are so excited to welcome you to god's family kindly go ahead right now send us an email let us know you gave your heart to christ someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new work of faith the email address is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com that is salvation in christ 101 at gmail.com god bless you please remember to subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on facebook on instagram and on tiktok at sandra boyo Areleba. thank you so much for being here again today it's always a pleasure having you here i look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow have a blessed day today i love you bye